Exodus is made up of five books. Each character has an intriguing story behind them, and each one's life story is highlighted in great detail. The Holocaust, the first, second, German, and youth Eliot all occur. We get to witness the personal lives of these great young builders of the state of Israel. The first book is the preparation for this first departure for illegal immigration to Palestine, with 300 young and dedicated children aboard the Exodus. I've never seen such dedication from all of them. All of those children who only strive for a home in the land of Palestine, and Ari, the mastermind behind all of this. Such composure. Me? I'm just an American journalist. But to be able to witness this moment in history and to report it nonetheless is astonishing. I'm not a Jew. I feel like an outsider when I'm with these people. But Ari and Karen, there's something about the two of them that's really keeping me in this. Yes, I wrote all the fake passports to these, for these children. I did it for the Nazis at Birkenau. I've been fighting almost all my life to get out of these barbed wire fences. I work for my freedom. I want to be in Palestine. I love Kitty as though she was my mother, and I want to be with her forever. Everyone involved knew what they were getting into. I have no regrets. Neither do the children. 85 hours without food? Good! They committed to it. None of them died or anything. They were very good. At least the British do have heart. And now they've got a terrible image across the globe. They were not going to let 10 children commit suicide every hour. Book 2? The history of this great man, Ari Ben Kane. Him and each member of his family. His father and uncle helped to create a new land out of an old rugged desert. Years ago my name was Yossi. I came here looking to start again, with my brother. It was hard to live under the shadow of my father's brutal murder. He died holding and protecting the Sefer Torah. I loved him, but I was no longer going to be a ghetto Jew. My brother and I trudged through snow and mountains for two years, graciously being hosted by each Jewish family that we passed through. Years ago, my name was Yaakov. I was, and still am, the beloved brother of Yossi Rabinsky, now known as Barak Van Kanan. I miss Barak. He stopped talking to me when I branched out of the Yishuv's fighting forces, the Haganah, and created the Maccabees. We Maccabees don't believe in restraint and peace like they do. We fight, and we fight violently to prove our point. Barak, being one of the bigger members of the issue, has hated me for this. I don't know if he even thinks about me anymore. Fifteen years ago, when we last spoke, the only person who I needed was him. My wife and daughter had just been murdered in a terrorist raid. I don't think that I'll ever get over their deaths. There is a lot of hostility between my father and his brother. The way Jews are so stubborn astonishes me. It has been fifteen years since they last spoke to each other. In Book 3, the Ben Canaan family history catches up with the time of the Exodus. The Exodus arrives in Palestine, and Kitty and all of the 300 children aboard the Exodus begin their new lives. I don't need anybody now. I have found my peace of mind here working with the Maccabees. However, I seem to continuously confuse myself, as I'm still somehow convincing myself that I'm in love with Karen. She's off to the States now, and I'll probably be hanged in a few days anyways. My time in this prison has been too long. They'll kill me any day now. Dove is such a vibrant, yet quiet and hostile young man. He only lives for violence and execution. He has never been calm before, and I highly doubt he ever will be. Meanwhile, my solid run in this world has come to a brutal end. Both Dove and I will be hanged in the coming days. I just wish that I could have seen or spoken to Barak one last time. My love for Palestine is strong, but my love for Kitty is much stronger. I will go with her to America to live in peace. Kitty saved my life. After the raid on the jail, in which Dove and Akiva were both able to escape, Though, Akiva died of a gunshot wound. I was badly injured. Shot in the leg. Kitty did the impossible. She removed the bullet from my leg with her bare hand. Day by day, I am more and more grateful for her. And I'm slowly making my way back to a full recovery. The work at Gondofna is so rewarding, especially because I'm with Karen. I'm constantly complimented on about my work with these near-dead children. Honestly, I'm just trying to do my job and remain a neutral party in this whole Jews versus Arabs and British situation. Finally, the day to leave has come, but I can't go. I think I'll stay. What will this mean to Karen? Will she be disappointed in me? In Book 4, there is not much individual character action. The Yishuv uses all of its power to receive as many votes as possible for a partition of Palestine. They end up winning in favor of the partition by an outstanding and an unexpected number. Immediately, the Arabs are dreadfully upset and begin to attack the settlements throughout Palestine. The Jews, however, fight back and win a lot of battles that take place. Then, the greatest battle of all is finally won. The State of Israel is formed. Of course, the Arabs are even more unhappy with this, 
and immediately launch a war from every direction and right into Palestine.